This is a Stage 8 spindle lock nut kit installed for my 1989 GMC V3500. Now, the kit says for 60 applications, but I believe it does fit some 70s and 14 bolts. But on the 14 bolts, after looking at some reviews, you have to measure the size of your spindle. So just kind of be wary when you order it um, what you're getting. This is, does not fit a 44 or a 10 bolt either. So the reason why I switched this because my original design was kind of messed up from one of the previous owners. So I'll go through the original three-piece design install and the Stage 8 five-piece design install, like kind of how they work and uh, the reason why I switched along the way. So in the original design, you have a spindle lock nut with a pin on it that faces out towards the locking hub or towards the outside of the truck. Um, and I had my original stock brake set up on this truck and I was uh, going through it all. My passenger side was good. This is the passenger one. Then my driver's side, I took it apart and the spindle um, nuts were all loose and stuff. I found out that someone had put it on backwards and sheared the pin off, which is actually more often than not a pretty common thing with Dana 60s because I guess a lot of guys aren't paying attention and put it on backwards with the pin inside. Um, go to torque everything down and then it just breaks the pin off and then it makes the whole design completely useless, but if it's done right it does kind of work um, If you want to run a stock setup, so the original design the uh, first spindle nut goes on And you set your preload. I'm not going to go off of that um, Piece just because everyone kind of goes a couple different ways with it. Some people go by the book some people go uh, by feel. Um, I'll let you guys kind of Google that one. But with the pin out, you have a uh, retaining washer now that's keyed for your spindle, which is a keyway, and then a bunch of holes through that pin. So you put that on next after you do your preload setup. And like right now, maybe some guys even make this mistake. They don't get that pin in that hole, and they go to put on the next nut, it just crushes it and breaks it off. So. A lot of guys will back it up just a little, rather the bearings be a touch loose than too tight and then end up burning them up, but you have to make sure the pin is in the hole, otherwise it'll shear it off, you know, have problems down the road. The next piece is a, a lock nut or a jam nut basically. This is where kind of I, the other reason why I switched over to the Stage 8. Someone uh, kind of damaged mine pretty good with a chisel as you can tell. Um, on the passenger side when I was putting it back together, I just ground it down so it fit back in the socket um, In this case I could grind this down or I could even flip it over after I grind it down It wouldn't be too bad, but I guess some people are a little too cheap to buy, you know, a $15 socket for whatever reason um, So chisel or flathead kind of destroys those but grind them down to fix them if you're in a bind But this one goes on there and uh, all this does is act as a jam nut or a lock nut. It just sandwiches it all together, locks it in there with whatever torque spec. Things like 150 plus. Um, still, the downside of this design is it still has the ability to back off over time, just because there's nothing holding it um, on itself. It's just going off its own like torque spec and kind of being in a, in a sandwich. So, I mean, it's not a bad design if it's um, you know in correct condition, working condition, but. I just had a couple too many issues and I opted for the Stage 8 just because if you install a Stage 8 correctly and I have to kind of put some emphasis on correctly, um, it'll work, but if you install it incorrectly then it'll be just as bad as a broken original three-piece design. So on the Stage 8 five-piece design you have a thrust washer goes on first, that's against your bearing. You have a notched washer which replaces your original retaining washer, both are keyed for the spindle um the original has a bunch of holes for that pin the new one has a bunch of notches for a locking retainer later on so that goes on next and you have a grooved spindle nut which is got two grooves in it for a snap ring and then a bunch of notches for a retaining piece later on and that replaces your original pin spindle nut. This one will now set your preload on your bearings, no different than the first one of the original design. So you put that on, 
and then you'd set your preload. Uh, after that, you go with this locking retainer. It says eight ways it can go on. Assuming it doesn't line up in the eight, one of the eight ways, you just end up rotating it um, a different way. So like right now, it doesn't go on. So basically, I'll keep rotating this until it eventually, okay, second time it went on. So right now, that locking retainer locked my groove spindle nut to my notch washer, which is then locked to my spindle. So all you have is that. Can't back off. Your preload will still be set. The downside is, you know, that can always back out, and then your spindle nut can loosen. So that's why the last piece of the puzzle is a snap ring. Now I did test that the snap ring has to go in the back grooves, it can't go in the front. That retaining ring will, it can back out all the way. Um, so just, I mean, that's the part where this has to be installed correctly. If it's not, you know, this design does not work. This is the one part you really have to get 100% right. Um, and if you're like me, you have the world's worst snap ring pliers, so it really makes the job even better. But you get that in there. Um, it's locked in there. That prevents all this from backing out. You know, it's all still locked. And if you want to just double check that it is down in the groove, you can kind of spin it. Um, and then maybe just kind of push it back. Make sure it does hit that like snap lock. You just have to make sure that that snap ring is installed correctly so your design um, still works. Um, that's the install, that's it.